My name is Laura Gallagher, and this is my channel on character art. So how do you improve your sculpts in general? And what are my secrets to doing a really good sculpt? I'm going to share some practical tips with you. I'll share some mental tips as well as to how to really get within the mentality to help you grow as a sculptor. We'll talk about references. We're even going to talk about hardware and how that can have an impact on your own sculpting. So this video is really jam-packed with all my secrets to sculpting. There's a lot to go through. Let's get started. If you're afraid of sculpting over something that you've done before because you're concerned that you won't be able to do it as well the second time, that lack of confidence is a sign that you need more practice. First time. <laughs> Lean into that feeling, destroy your surface, restart it, do it as many times as you need until you feel as if you are able to get the result that you want consistently. A smooth stroke can be very beneficial. If your stroke is all lumpy and rough, your result will probably be lumpy and rough. <laughs> Tweak those settings until your brush is buttery smooth. Finding your own style of sculpting will take some exploration. To be able to explore effectively, you need to be in a somewhat playful state. You need to allow yourself to explore things that may wind up being dead ends and not get stressed about that. So you can't really do exploration if you're always concerned about creating the next portfolio piece. It's very important that you reserve time to do sculpting without necessarily having an end goal in mind and to simply let the process take you somewhere new. Reserve time for exploration. Cocaine. That's a joke, don't do drugs, kids. While you're developing your creation and you're exploring forms, get a technical side of things out of the way. The less time you spend worrying about your brush settings, about your resolution settings, then the more time that you will spend worrying about proportions, volumes, planes, and shapes, and higher is the chance that you will get into a state of flow. Don't worry about the resolution of your mesh. If you think that it's a little bit too low, that's not a problem. You can always go back over your surface later on and polish some of those details. Just sculpt, damn it! Shape that surface! Take your brush and fucking carve in it! Do it! Shape it like you would shape some delicious dough. Flow is a mental state, but for me it's also a sculpting philosophy. As we're sculpting, we want to be constantly flowing around the sculpture. We want to be improving everything everywhere all at once. I am paying attention. Don't let your mind develop tunnel vision in a particular zone, because then that's just going to lead to a sculpt that's going to feel very uneven and you're just going to feel very uneasy about the result. Dance around the shape, work on a zone a little bit, and then put it aside before you even feel that it has been completed, but once you feel that you've made meaningful progress on it. That's the key. It's to make meaningful progress, but not necessarily try to reach perfection. Zoom out when you're judging proportions. You can't accurately judge the proportions of something like a face if your own face is stuck to the screen. Your fovea is really small and you won't be able to accurately judge the proportions of anything that is within your peripheral vision nearly as well as if that was within your fovea. This is a key problem for those who use Cintiqs, by the way, so keep that in mind. On a regular basis, pull yourself off of your screen and look at your screen from a distance or make your character much smaller. But I actually prefer for you to pull yourself off of your screen and look at your screen from a distance because that will also allow your eyes to relax. Setting constraints on yourself will help you grow. Saying things like, I'm not going to use a smooth brush at all today. Or perhaps even saying things, I'm literally only going to use the clay brush and nothing else. Instead of focusing on trying to change your brush settings, Try to focus on using the brushes that you already currently have and try to see how you can control them to reach the exact result that you have in mind. These types of constraints will help you to develop a deeper understanding of the tools that you will be using. Your dexterity will improve, your feeling of mastery will improve, which will make future sculptures even better. Look what I did to this city with a few drums of gas and a couple of bullets. Hmm? This is your brush intensity control. If you're constantly adjusting the strength of your brush, it may be that your brush isn't configured properly. Set your brush strength high enough so that you do get a good amount of displacement as you press hard on your tablet 
but not too hard. And then tweak things like your pressure curve to create very soft, very shallow strokes only by modifying the pressure that you put over your pen. Record yourself as you're sculpting on something and then play it back afterward. Record yourself as you're sculpting on something and then play it back afterward. Speed it up. Look at it big, look at it as a little thumbnail. Try to analyze where are your strong points and your weak points. You'll gain valuable insights into your own sculpting style that you may not have realized before. Get your own references from movies and TV shows instead of sourcing them from Google search. I got something on my face, soldier. By sourcing your own references from movies and TV shows, you are more guaranteed to get references that have high contrast lighting, interesting angles, and consistency in terms of morphology and age of the particular person you are sculpting. Well, physically, we are exactly the same. There are some slight differences. Gloves are great when it comes to sculpting, especially if your hands get a little bit sticky after a while. If your hands start to stick to the surface of your tablet, and this is even worse if you're using a pen display because those tend to get a little bit hot, you will lose dexterity and in turn, your sculpting won't be as good. A cheap tablet can be as good as a very expensive tablet when it comes to sculpting. As long as your tablet has pen pressure, as long as the pen is comfortable to hold for a few hours, any tablet is going to work. And the quality of your sculpting depends more on the quality of your own motor skills than it does on the quality of your tablet. I went from a Cintiq back to an Intuos, and I actually think that my sculpting is better now. My eyes are further from the monitor than when I was using a Cintiq, which means they're not forcing as much, and my posture is a lot more ergonomic than when I was doing the shrimp on top of my Cintiq all the time. You'll spend hours sculpting, so it's very important that you have a proper posture when you do sculpt. A good posture while working is an investment in yourself for the future. If you plan on doing this for decades to come, you gotta make sure that your body is able to support that. And this is the most important one. Make sure that you do things that are fun. The time has come for us to ride on to our next adventure. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.